What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Next Path Podcast. I'm Phil Perry coming at you, not live, but coming at you from Tucson, Arizona. We're here at the University of Arizona, where the Patriots will be spending the week getting ready for their game against the Las Vegas Raiders. If you're watching us on YouTube, there's your field right there. The house that Nick Folk built is what I called it earlier today. Rob Gronkowski's name is etched here, as is Teddy Bruschi's. Uh, This is Arizona Stadium. Nice little field here. This is not where the Patriots are practicing. There's a grass practice field across the street. So that's where they were earlier today. We just got off the practice field, uh, as did the Patriots players themselves. Had a chance to talk to a handful of them, including including the hottest pass rusher on the planet right now. It's a guy who goes by the name of Josh Uche. Very excited to have Josh on with us for an exclusive interview with the Next Pats podcast, a repeat guest on the Next Pats podcast. We had him on the pod right after he was drafted in 2020, a second-round pick for the Patriots, all kinds of promise, all kinds of physical ability. And I was told going into that draft that he might have been a first-round pick had he not gotten injured at the Senior Bowl. So he wasn't able to test at the Combine, wasn't able to put up the kinds of explosive athletic numbers that we thought he might. And maybe that ended up working in the Patriots' favor. Patriots, of course, did not use their first round pick in 2020. They ended up trading out of the first round, taking Kyle Duggar at the top of the second round, then taking Josh Uche a little bit later. But had Uche been healthy, had he tested, maybe the Patriots wouldn't have even had a crack at him. And boy, would they be kicking themselves now because the guy has 10 sacks. And again, there's nobody hotter when it comes to edge rushers in the NFL right now. Three sacks against the Arizona Cardinals on Monday Night Football. He won the AFC Defensive Player of the Week award He and Matthew Judon are the first teammates, first pair of teammates this season to have double-digit sacks. It's the first time that the Patriots have had teammates with double-digit sacks since Andre Carter and Mark Anderson did it more than a decade ago in 2011. It's only the fourth time in team history that the Patriots have two players with double-digit sacks. So this is big for Josh Uche. I mean, he is in the last month especially, come on, like gangbusters. He's first in the NFL in sacks with five in that span. He's first in pass rush win rate, according to Pro Football Focus. He's first in Pro Football Focus pass rush grade in the last four games. He's second in pass rush productivity, which is a stat that PFF tracks. And he's fifth in the NFL in total pressures in the last month with 11. How is he doing it? It starts by being on the field. He, of course, suffered through the first couple seasons of his pro career, dealing with a variety of injuries. He only played in 21 of 33 games in those first two seasons in 2020 and 2021. Ankle issue, foot issue, dealt with a hamstring issue this year, but he's played in 11 of 13 games so far in 2022. Here's his head coach, Bill Belichick, on just why he's been able to play as well as he has. Has a lot to do with the fact that he is available. Yeah, as uh, I think I said, the biggest thing with Josh is just him being out there. Um, you know, he's always um, put good plays on film uh, and good plays on the practice field, and, and he's flashed. Um, it's just, you know, this year he's been able to stay out there on a consistent basis, and that's allowed him to continue to move ahead um, and and build on his repertoire, build his communication and uh, execution with his teammates on pass rush games and communication and, you know, drops and coverage adjustments and things like that, which he's involved in to a degree. And... Um, just doing that on a consistent basis, day after day, week after week, uh, that that definitely piles up and um, you know makes it that splits up a second faster. Uh, whether it's your reactions, communication, anticipation, uh, I think those have really been the biggest things. He's been out there since um, you know started the off-season program, all through training camp, and and you uh, know all the weeks in the regular season. And that's wasn't really the case the last two years. I think that's that's been a big thing. He's always worked hard, and he's always done everything you've asked him to do he's, he's been great to coach but i think just his availability this year has affected his production I find it interesting that bill belichick mentions he's able to play even faster because of the number of reps that he's gotten this is a guy who already has plenty of speed only 235 pounds maybe 230 he's not a massive human being but he's such a good athlete and offensive tackles have to account for that, and it is so far in the front of their minds that Uche might be one of the best athletes they see on the edge this season that he's able to overpower them at times too because they overplay 
the speed aspect of Uche's game, and yet he's still strong enough to bowl them over when he has the opportunity. Just this past week alone against the Cardinals, you see him using all kinds of pass rush moves. He's working extensively with Joe Kim, who is the pass rush coach specialist, really, for the New England Patriots. You see him work a lot with defensive linemen, but a lot with these outside linebackers like Uche as well. Demarcus Covington is somebody that Uche credits with his ability to be as impactful as a pass rusher this year as well. And so in Arizona on Monday Night Football, you see the dip and rip from Josh Uche result in a pressure. You see speed to power result in a sack, an inside out move and a rip for a pressure, a long arm move for a pressure, a hesitation move for a sack, a change of pace, little variation on the hesitation move that leads to a quarterback hit and an interception for his teammate Marcus Jones. All kinds of pass rush moves one-on-one that Uche has refined over the last couple of years and that we have seen over the last couple of weeks, especially. He also had a sack off of a game. You heard Bill Belichick talk about the chemistry that needs to be built between teammates and the communication that needs to happen between teammates for those types of plays to be executed. And we've heard earlier this season, Josh Uche credited with the fact that he is the one who is making a lot of the pass rush calls at times out there. Okay, they're going to be flushing left. Are they going to be flushing right? Is it a me game? Is it a you game? Am I heading inside and allowing the defensive tackle to bow and go around the edge to the quarterback? Or is the defensive tackle the one leading the way and setting a pick on a tackle so that Uche or Judon or somebody else can attack the interior of the line and get after the quarterback that way? Those are decisions that Josh Uche is making in real time on the field at times. A guy who's only in his third year still, only 24 years old, still and still has so much more room to grow. Again, I told you we had an exclusive interview with Josh Uche. We're going to get to that right now. We cover a lot of ground. We talk about Von Miller's influence on his career. We talk about the advice that he got from Mike Vrabel, t- Titans head coach. Mike Vrabel right before his rookie year began. And we're talking about why Josh Uche is able to stay on the field as often as he's been and how Pilates has helped him out. Without further ado, here's our conversation with Josh Uche. All right, here we are with Josh Uche. Josh, thanks for being with us on the Next Pats podcast here, man. Very nice honor for you. Defensive Player of the Week for the AFC. How's it feel? Feels good. I mean, I I wouldn't have been able to do it without my teammates and uh, my coaches. And uh, just going out there and doing my job, so. We talked to Bill Belichick earlier today. He said the biggest thing for Josh is just that he's been available. And that has actually helped him play a little bit faster in terms of being able to communicate with his teammates, whether it's making his drops or pass rushing. But do you feel like you're playing faster just because of the amount of time you've been out on the field this year? I mean, yeah, Michigan, uh, Coach Harbaugh always emphasized you only get good at what you do repetitively. And, uh, you know, being out there on the practice field, you know, I'm just we're pra- we practice hard and, you know, you treat every practice like a game. And, you know, that's kind of what happens. And you just you're working hard every single snap. And, uh, yeah, you know, Coach is right. You know, it's a result of just being out there and consistency and just brick by brick, day by day, just laying the foundation down. So. What are you doing this year that might be a little bit different compared to your first couple of years as a pro that's helped you stay on the field? I've talked to you after you've been lifting after games. This guy's working hard because he's coming back into the locker room after being in the weight room, after playing in an NFL game, and you're drenched in sweat, and you've told me before, just chasing greatness, man, just chasing greatness. Is that one of the things that maybe you've changed, or is that something that you've done before? I'm just interested how you've been able to stay on the field. I mean, definitely. We just have great leaders like Matthew Slater, Devin McCourty, Matthew Judon, Dietrich Wise, and, you know, seeing those guys, see how they approach each day with tenacity and just enthusiasm. I try to just imitate that. And um, I'm doing the best I can, just trying to help the team win. And uh, I'm just following those guys because those guys are the true leaders of the team. And, um, you know, I'm just playing my role. Is there one thing, whether it's sleep, nutrition, stretching Pilates, I don't know what you're doing behind the scenes, but, but but is there something that maybe you've changed in your routine this year? I mean, yeah, definitely just, um, you know, in the off season, I made sure I had things in place so I didn't really have to think too much in terms of, you know, my diet or my training or my, you know, Pilates and, you know, different things. So I was able to find uh, a core group of people from my circle to kind of just help facilitate that and just help me stay out there. And, you know, Jerry Lewis, my trainer here with the Patriots, you know, he's just done a great job with me from the first time I've gotten here, you know, from mentally, emotionally, and just physically, just, you know, getting me through the different injury, injuries I've had. So, you know, just shout out to him. And, you know, it's all God, honestly. That's the most I can say, you know, God, it's just been good. So you do do Pilates. How has that helped? I mean, Pilates is great. I mean, it was uh, first originated, created by a boxer 
So it just helps with different movements, core stability and uh, mobility as well. And, um, you know, trying to implement that into my game and make things more fluid and prevent injuries. And uh, shout out to D-Mac, man. Love that guy. He seems like a Pilates guy. D-Mac, I mean, he does everything. I mean, I remember first getting here, I would see D-Mac and Matthew Slater in the cold tubs like almost every day. I was like, okay, those guys are great. Why not do what they're doing? So you're doing cold tub as well. Is that that feels like that's a painful part of the routine, something that you probably don't look forward to all that much, but you do anyway because you know it benefits you. Oh, of course. I mean, some people say it works, some people say it doesn't, but hey, I, I feel good after it, so. How difficult was it through those first couple of years to not be on the field as much as I'm sure you would have wanted to? You mentioned, you know, trainers. I'm sure there are others, teammates that have helped you yeah, you know. emotionally. You know, in terms of just dealing with your situation, how difficult was it those first couple of years being a young guy who wanted to be on the field and couldn't? It was definitely difficult, but I remember, you know, uh, during the combine, I had met with the Titans and Mike Brable told me something that stuck with me, you know, till now. And it was, he was telling me how blessed I was to have gone through the, this adversity in college, you know, not playing for my first two years and, you know, that frustration. He said that that was going to help me later down the road. I didn't know when it would be. And same thing kind of happened. It feels a bit the same. And uh, yeah, I've been here before. I've been through this before and my family's been there for me, my girl, you know, my coaches my teammates you know everyone you know just leaning on them and um yeah and my faith most importantly you know because I definitely got more in touch with God and you know it's all this is blessings you were dealing with some injury around that time too the combine I remember talking to you you're you're a repeat guest on the next pass podcast we talked to you a couple of years ago that our fans will remember uh but you were dealing with injury you, you got injured at the senior bowl I know and so we're dealing with some adversity there too I have to ask you about two pass rush moves before we let you go Josh because you're a very popular guy Today, especially because it was just announced that you got the AFC Defensive Player of the Week award. Two moves in particular over the course of the last few weeks that we've seen from you. The first is the quote unquote ghost move that Cam Jordan uh, spoke about online, clip that went viral. It allegedly is a move that Von Miller has, has made famous. Tell us about the ghost move and how you learned it because I know you've spent some time with Von. Yeah, I mean, just watching a lot of film on Von and just different guys trying to do what he does. I mean, and he also has a pass for Summit every year, and I was fortunate enough to get invited and get coached by great guys like Chuck Smith and uh, Demarcus Ware was out there, Max Crosby was out there, and just learning from those guys and, you know, them everyone just kind of collaborating and just soaking it in as a young guy. So, yeah. Are you still in touch with Von Miller all that much? How has he been in terms of being a mentor for you? Obviously, you got plenty here. Matt Judon is one of those guys, but he's Von Miller's, you know, one of the greatest uh, of this generation. So how helpful has he been to your career, you think? That's my guy. I mean, he hit me up after the game and he was, you know, he was just saying I was doing my thing. He's proud of me. And uh, that meant a lot to me. I had to take a screenshot of it because it's like, still feel like a little kid and, you know, and just having one of the guys I look up to kind of recognize me a little bit. It's just, you know, it feels good. So the ghost move itself, not that I want you to put me on my back here, but how, how does that go? How does it work? Honestly, it's kind of like a game feeling thing. It's, it's hard to really walk through, but uh, there's a bunch of clips out there. You need to watch Vaughn. You need to ask Vaughn how to do it. He'll, he'll really break it. You, you, you flash the long arm. Maybe you pull it away, get somebody off balance. The other one was you, you made someone fall over in that Bills game with a, with a little bit of a hesitation move, which you don't see all that often. You know, it's almost like an and one mixtape tour type of deal where, you know, a crossover gets somebody to trip and fall in the lane. I mean, that you made that happen against a professional level NFL tackle how does that move work um honestly it's just all about mentality comes down to want to comes down to just playing the game as hard as you can you know you, you never know how many opportunities you get and it's just all about maximizing your chances on the field and just treating every snap like it's your last and yeah how often do you have to work on a move like that say after practice or your spare time to make sure that it comes off the way that it does I mean, all the time, I mean, working with Joe Kim and uh, DeMarcus Covington, I mean, we we work past us all the time and working it with Matt Judon and Dietrich Wise and all those guys, we all just collaborate. Everyone's constantly working on their, their craft and, you know, we're just, we go to practice each and every day and we work on our craft. And I think that's why, you know, our pass rush is doing what it's doing. Everyone's just doing their part and everyone's executing and everyone's eating. So. All right, there's Josh Uche, recent AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Josh, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it, man. Great stuff there from Uche. Really appreciate him taking a few minutes. He's a busy, busy guy these days, especially after winning Defensive Player of the Week. A lot of people who want to talk to him, so we appreciate him spending some time 
with us and the Patriots, they may be getting even more pass rush help on the way here soon. I would have practice on Wednesday again at the University of Arizona. We saw Christian Barmore for the first time in a long time. He's been on injured reserve since week six when he suffered a knee injury in a win over the Cleveland Browns. But his clock has now started. He is now designated to return off IR. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean he's available to play against the Raiders on Sunday? It could. It just means that the Patriots have 21 days to activate Christian Barmore to the active roster, to the 53-man roster. If they don't do that within the next 21 days, then Barmore's season is over. He'll finish the year on IR. But they have that much time to be able to bring him back into the fold. And until then, he is able to practice. So the NFL gives teams that three-week window to be able to determine, okay, is this injured player or is this player coming off of injury healthy enough to be able to help us? And do we have a spot for him on our active roster? Of course, the Patriots would for somebody like Christian Barmore if he's healthy enough to play. We'll see if he's healthy enough to play against the Raiders. But he is eligible now to get back on the field. And this would be a huge boost for a Patriots defense that is already among the elite when it comes to rushing the passer. They're second in the league, according to Pro Football Reference, when it comes to pressure rate at 26.4%. The only team that they are behind in that category is the Dallas Cowboys. Christian Barmore, one of the best interior rushers in football, not just one of the best young interior rushers in football last year, but one of the best at his position in football last year, top 10 in terms of total pressures from the interior with 51 and he's gotten a lot more attention in his second season, or he did through the first six weeks of his second season, seeing a lot of double teams opening things up for guys like Uche, for guys like Matthew Junon. But if they can continue to do that once he is back on the field, if and when he's back on the field, that should only help players like Junon, Uche, Dietrich Wise, and others. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this edition of the Next Path Podcast from Tucson, Arizona, on the road. Thanks for listening. Thanks for always checking back in with the Next Path Podcast. We'll be coming at you with another Next Path episode next week after their game against the Raiders. Can they stay in this playoff hunt and which young Patriots are helping them in that regard? We'll be talking about it all next week. We'll talk to you then.